Viewers, viewers, and YouTubers, what's up, y'all? It's GA Turks with my review of Halloween Kills. Now, if you want to see the script pitch for the 13th installment of Friday the 13th, I will leave a link in the description, or you can click on the card above or catch the end screen while watching from your YouTube app or your PC or Mac. Y'all, I have been waiting for this movie. But I have to tell y'all something. I have to admit that I did not like Halloween 2018. The moment that I found out that Lori had a Michael safe home in the woods, it made the whole movie a predictable plot just to get him to her spot. And I was done when the psychiatrist with the poorly written objective came in to do just that. Plus, the whole idea of taking Michael into the woods and out of his neighborhood takes him out of his setting and, and puts him in a adjacent territory and that just kind of for me that just kind of took me out of the movie altogether. but the studios knew that having jamie lee curtis back on the big screen with michael myers would free them to write any old thing and nostalgia would cause us to go along with that retconning the sequels and all but i just couldn't go for it not me i felt like they could have given us something a little bit more intelligent i mean when i heard the breathing at the end of the movie when i heard michael breathing at the end of that movie i was like oh my god I, okay i guess we just got to deal with this more corny movies to come more corny writing which brings me to my review of halloween kills now i must say i wasn't impressed with all of the early advertising i hated that they gave so much away so early but I was super shocked. The whole idea of bringing in the fire department uh, and the firemen to put out the flames and the fire and all of that, I did not see that coming. I did not expect it. To me, that was brilliant writing and it was an excellent way to have him to survive. All right, guys, I had to make a quick stop, but I'm back. Before I start the review, I want to warn you that there will be what I like to call kinfolk spoilers. You know, the kind of spoilers that your cousins give you that don't really tell you what happened, but definitely leave you like, I have got to see this movie or leave you waiting for a certain part for sure. Now, those are the type of spoilers that you will get. But if I feel like I'm going to go too far, I'll let you know in advance, I got you. Halloween Kill makes up for every mistake 2018 made and puts everything back on track. I really love how HK allows you to see all of the fallout from the events of 2018, so much so that the two films could actually be ran back to back as one film, with this one being like the climactic conclusion of the middle film. Now, as a salute to the original, HK starts off with like a tragedy. I love when movies do callbacks and give other perspectives to the original work. HK gives us an additional backstory plot from the night Michael attacked Lori. And they kind of talk with you a little bit because you can actually hear Dr. Loomis outside the house as events are going on inside the house. Now, the actor who plays Dr. Loomis, his name is Donald Pleasance, passed in 1995. So I was very curious to see if they would bring him into the new scenes or if it would even be necessary. Now, I won't say what happens, but I will say it was worth seeing how everything comes together. Now, I really liked how as the town becomes alert to the dangers of Double M, they did a great job of expressing, building, and executing the community bond. It added a realness and an air of safety for the movie watcher that is totally contradicted and contrasted when Michael is on the scene. Now, if you feel safe in groups, you're ready to totally be caught off guard. Now, speaking of safety, in the 2018 film, we saw Lori stab, double limb, and shoot him in the hand. And in HK, her daughter says, that she shot him in the face. Now, I don't know what she remembers, but he is doing a whole lot with this hand and that face in this movie. Now, people were being sent to the hospital left and right. He was affecting that town like it had coronavirus, no joke. This Michael is vicious and calculating. There is one scene where he purposely finishes off someone just to show the unlooking loved one that you can't protect him and I want to anger and terrorize you at the same damn time because you up next. It was crazy. And y'all be on the lookout for the black doctor and nurse in this movie. They are definitely going to incite some crowd reaction, especially the gun scene. Now that's all I'm going to say about that part, but especially the gun scene. Now, as you know from the trailers, there is a Michael and Lindsay Waller confrontation. Now, when she is in his grip, she does something 
that I've never seen anybody do the double M. Uh, and what she does is so peculiar, but it's probably the only reason Michael would ever let anybody go. Totally unexpected. When you see it, let me know what you think in the comments. At the final showdown, I won't say what happens, but Michael's mask situation is giving us own time to shine and almost comes across as a Superman cape of sorts. I won't, I won't give it away, but this sequel will definitely make the rewatch of the first one scarier because you see on what Double M is capable of and it adds weight to what Laurie is up against when she's dealing with him one-on-one. -on -one. To add emphasis to how much better this movie is, I didn't purchase the first film on 4K, but this sequel it brings everything together so well, it makes the first one a must-have. <laughs> the only thing that could mess this up is the third act. We'll just have to see. Other than that, HK does a great job at building the intensity and being a total fulfilling slasher flick. I would say it's definitely an at the theater watch. The kind of movie where the bigger the crowd, the bigger the fun. Let's discuss what you think in the comments and don't forget to subscribe so I can always have your view. Now, go thumb that like button and thanks in advance.